Hurricane Dorian, as you know, saturated the news last week and the storm may have passed, but the effects from this hurricane will be felt for a very long time down in the Bahamas. If you remember, it was a category five when it made landfall and just sat on top of the island for more than 48 hours. Devastating life as people knew it and leaving over 40 people dead. And our Marcus Moore has been there the entire time and joins us now from Nassau, um, where the recovery uh, efforts are underway. So. Marcus, it's good to see you. Um, you've been there from the beginning. I want to ask you first about um, this visa requirement uh, where Bahama citi citizens, if they want to come to the U.S., um, they have to have that visa. So tell us what's uh, going on yeah, with that. Uh, that's right, Kimberly. These are these are travel rules that have have been in place for for, for quite some time. Um, anyone who is from the Bahamas and they are a national and they don't, and they don't carry a U.S. passport, they're required. Uh, to uh, have a, a travel visa if they are on a cruise of some sort or traveling by, uh, by plane. Um, th there had been calls for those requirements to be relaxed in the immediate aftermath of, uh, of this storm that uh, the number one priority should have been to or should be to get people to, to safety. And so there's, there's frustration there on the part of some people who, who believe that those travel restrictions are, are perhaps putting lives at risk, but uh, there are other options for, for people who are trying to get off of some of these affected islands, and they include uh, the other islands here in the Bahamas and also Nassau, where we are right now, which has a U.S. embassy, and so there are avenues for, for people who do want to get to the U.S. They can go to the U.S. embassy here, um, have an interview, and, and go through the process of getting an emergency visa uh, to either be with family uh, or try to start over or at least temporarily uh, go to the U.S. as the situation here improves. So uh, there are avenues, uh, but it is no doubt very frustrating uh, for people who many of them have lost everything, Kimberly, uh, including their homes, the material possessions, uh, but also uh, loved ones who have been killed or at this hour are still reported missing. Yeah, Marcus, um, incredibly sad. So what has been going on with you um, since the storm has passed? What have you seen? Um, I, I, you've traveled to some other places besides Nassau? Yeah, that's right. We have, we've seen the situation here in Nassau and how uh, this has really been a hub for not only a, a place for survivors to, to go and reconnect with their families and also, uh, again, start over and try to figure out what they will do next. We've also seen a lot of the relief aid and, and relief workers coming from Nassau to go to the affected islands of Grand Bahama and uh, the Abaco Islands and Treasure Key. Uh, also, Elbow Key is an area that we saw a couple of days ago for the first time. It's popular with a, a number of vacation homes and is a community of about uh, six or seven hundred people. And we saw them already beginning the process of trying to rebuild and clear debris and pave the way for a, a, a recovery effort that will take some time. But they were imploring the government to send in more help heavy equipment, or to send in heavy equipment, I should say, because they only had one backhoe there, and they are not waiting for the government in the meantime to begin the recovery, uh, their recovery. Uh, uh, then in Marsh Harbor, which is in the Abaco Islands, where we spent a lot of time, it's also where our crew rode out the storm, uh, we have seen heavy equipment arriving there on barges, and it's, it's a clear sign that they will begin the process of trying to reestablish the infrastructure there because there's no power, there is no water, but we've also seen search and recovery teams combing through the widespread destruction there, Kimberly. Uh, the fear is that there are hundreds who are underneath that rubble and uh, they will account for the death toll that officials say is sure to rise. And right now it stands at 50, 42 people reportedly killed in Marsh Harbor and eight people killed in a neighboring Grand Bahama. Yes, and Marcus, just before we go, um, since you've been there for um, this length of time, I just have to ask, what has it been like for you to see this from start to now, the point where it is now? Um, it, it's, been, it's been difficult, uh, Kimberly, and you know, our jobs here are to report what, what's happening and get that back to anyone who will listen and pay attention, and then you know, it, it's up to them to decide what they, uh, how they'll react to that or how they'll respond. And so you know, we have been solely focused on 
getting the word out about what's happening to the people here in the Bahamas and also capturing the, the response from Bahamians, from Haitians, and from the international community. And uh, to see that happening uh, is, is encouraging. But I've got to tell you, Kimberly, they have such a long road uh, ahead. Uh, I was at Hurricane Katrina, and the damage that I've seen here uh, reminds me of that. But it is on a, a different level, if you will, uh, in that this is happening on an island. So you have the, uh, I'm sorry, it's happening on a collection of islands, I should say, and it's, um, it's presenting a real challenge in getting those resources in. And so um, I, I've seen the response. I've seen strong Bahamians saying that they will get through this, but I've also seen the, the despair and the, um, the, the want for, for the government, for anyone who stands ready to help for them to come and, and, and do it because they have a long way to go, Kimberly. And this is, um, I, I suspect that this will be going on for, for, for 10 years. Um, wow. At least several years, to say the very least, Kimberly. That's, that's how bad the damage is here. And um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Wow. Um, Marcus Moore right there in Nassau in the Bahamas. Thank you so much for the updates. We appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.